We're a humble bunch. <laughs> Done already. Hi, Dan. Afternoon, Steve. I'm just starting off with some tea news as per usual. Uh, Danilo and Serge Aurier, how are they? Um, Serge is, is closer than uh, than Danilo. Danilo's gonna gonna be out for a few weeks uh, yet. Um, um, Serge is, like I said, getting closer. It's um, it's one that we're trying to push as hard as as hard as we can without taking any unnecessary risk. And um, yeah, we'll we'll see see how that that goes. You mentioned um, post match against Burnley that Willie Bolly was not feeling well. Yeah. How is he now? Is he recovered? Well, he's back with us. Yeah, I mean, he, he took a bit of a hit with the uh, with the illness, which can take a little bit of uh, recovery time. So, there's another one that we're sort of monitoring um, daily. But uh, but he is back back with the group. Yeah. Any other injury concerns? That I no, to not from uh, uh, Felipe. Is still still managing a knee situation from from. Um, Coming back with a group, but something that we're constantly having to to, to monitor and, and, and manage. But uh, but nothing new from from the game on Monday night. Now that stuff is out of the way, Steve. It was two years to the day you appointed mm. Nottingham Forest boss. So congratulations on your anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder, are you ever able to step away for a moment to appreciate kind of from where you've taken the club in two years? You know, from the nope. journey. No, no, I feel exactly the same today as I did <laughs> on my my first day two years ago, and that's just and how we get better. And how we we improve, um, of course. Over the two years, my uh, fondness for the club and my um, my feeling for for the club has has, has grown, um, and and you always hope for for that to to continue. Um, but while that has happened, the the responsibility gets bigger. Um, the um, the want to to improve increases, and that's where my where my mentality is. So. Um, the intention from day one was to was to work hard, to do your best, but but also to try and improve and, and, and have a, an influence. And um, the moment you stop doing that is the moment I think that them things don't, don't happen. So um, if anything, all of that feeling has, has increased. And um, I'm only looking forward. I'm not one for looking back. Um, it, it's a, it's a, a job that I love, and it's a, a, a city that I really enjoy being part of. But I also know I'm here with a responsibility to do the best job possible for for the football club, and that's always to to improve and to be ready for the next game. So um, no, that's enough said on that. The only thing in my mind is the toughest game in the world, uh, which is Man City away on uh, on the weekend, and um, that's that's the only thing that I'm concerned about. As you mentioned, looking ahead to the next game, let's do that. Does that six nil from last season still sting, or do you approach this one without thinking about that and just? Prepare a bit differently. Yeah, uh, good question. Um, yeah, I don't think it's something you should you should forget. Uh, as, as difficult as what that night was, um, you, you should always look to learn and 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 um, and move move forward. Um, listen, Man, Man City, wherever you play them, but particularly at, at, at the Etihad, is as I said for me the toughest game you can play in in domestic football. Um, and you can go there and play well and still still be on the back end of a of a difficult result, that's that's the reality of the level that that they can play at, you know, and um, um, you know we are fully aware of that. But you have to go there with ambition. You have to go there with a the confidence. You have to go there with um, a mentality that you can be at your best, and and then um, things will unfold, you know. So um, so we're under no illusions how tough the game is, but we also know that we are in a good mindset at the moment, and. Um, and we just, like I've said in the last couple of weeks, we're only thinking about ourselves. We're only thinking about how we can have the impact and influence that, that we want. If that's enough on a day, um, great. And it, and it might not be, and particularly on days like playing Manchester City away. But at least we're in control of, of that. And um, that's that's what our approach will be. But huge respect and, and um, admiration for, for Pep and Man City and the, the level they play at and... And what they did last season, and, and continue to do, um, but at the same time, you have to go there, as I said, with, with ambition, trying to to give the best account that you can. 
Uh, and just finally for me, Steve, we spoke a lot about the different new signings this summer. Mm. I want to ask you about Matt Turner because we had yeah. you know, the pleasure of speaking to him yesterday. Mm. And he's a great communicator, but he was really talking about relishing being a number one again in mm. his career at the moment, of course. Just what has he added to the changing room and what have you seen from him? Yeah, well, I think everyone knew that uh, after the, the end of last season that we um, we needed to add to the, to the goalkeeping um, part of the squad. Uh, and we feel like we're in a really strong place now with Matt, obviously Wayne and, and Ethan, the sister was from last year. And we've added Oddie, which we're, we're equally delighted with. And it's a, a really competitive area of our squad. And that's what we want. We want that all, all over the squad. So, um, uh, but Matt's, Matt's played and um, it, it's really interesting that, uh, you know, from last season and this season, we've brought a lot of players in that have come to the Premier League for the first time, whether they've come from other top leagues around Europe or a step up. And and we, we've learned that whatever you've done before, when you come to the Premier League and, and play for the first time, it takes getting used to because English football, Premier League, the way the, the games are supported, the way the games are refereed, it's completely unique and different. And there's always an, you know, an adaptation and a transition period for a player to get used, used to the level. Some, some adapt really quickly some take a bit more time and I think we've got um, good examples of, of all of that and everything everything in between so um, but for Matt yeah he's, he's definitely settled into the group he's, he's a really good good lad very good work ethic to training really bought into you know the objectives of the club and the values and, and is interested and he's, and he's really really good to work with every day and uh, um, we're really happy with him I'm not don't want to say too much because you want your goalkeeper to play well in the next game, of course. Um, and let's hope we can support him to do that. Thanks, Dan. Nice. Yeah, Naz. Nice. Nice, Steve, you're okay. You? Yeah, you? Um, yeah, very good. In terms of, from a coach's point of view, purely from a coaching perspective, mm. how excited do you get pitting your wits against arguably mm. one of the greatest coaches on the planet and playing in that environment yeah. and preparing a team to go up against yeah, Pep I don't, and I don't know. Yeah, I mean, obviously you really enjoy the, 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 um, the process of coaching and preparing for a game and um, excited. Uh, I'm not sure that's, that's the word I would use about how I feel because you're so in the moment and focused that... Um, um, that sort of overrides every, every everything else. You're just concentrating on on the process of trying to get ready for a game and supporting the players and hopefully getting a plan together that we everybody can 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 commit to. So um, yeah, there's always differences to to every game that you you play and and you have to recognise that um, it, for me it, it doesn't get any tougher than than the next one. Um, but at the same time, you, you, you have to go there and, and, and back yourselves and believe in yourselves. And um, I repeat, we, we could be at our very, very best and it might not be enough. Um, but we've got to be at our best to give ourselves a chance. And that's what we aim to do. In terms of the players you brought in, Daniel mentioned some of the new signings. There seems to be an added zip and pace about you with Callum and Morgan and mm. uh, Anthony on, on the other side that's a real bonus isn't it for you and that's going to be a threat going forward for you I hope so and that, that was definitely the intention of, of bringing all of the players in was to improve the squad and to um, give ourselves a bit more more variety um, we, we, there's a balance to that and, a, and a, I keep using the word transition but I think that's right you, things don't just don't just happen. We we saw that last year more than more than once. There was the start of the season where we signed players and we had to take a little bit of time to become something. And I found ourselves doing that again after we picked up a load of injuries. And I think there's a little bit of that feeling at, at the moment. But while knowing there is a bank of work with a lot of the players already there that we we have to continue with as well. So we're always trying to find the right right balance. Just explain to Daniel and and and, and yourself that new players coming in doesn't mean that they're going to hit the ground running straight away and play well. I think you saw that the other night at Burnley. Though. There was a lot of change um, for us in the game, the formation that we played, players making their Premier League debuts for us, uh, players playing in England for the first time, players playing next to, to somebody, say, in midfield or and for, for the first time. And there was no way that there was going to be a, a complete performance I'm really pleased that there were some positive signs, but I also know that there's some 
there was some parts of the performance that we looked look fairly new and fresh. And when it's like that, then it takes a bit of getting up to speed. So, um, so we have to, have to balance all of these things. Um, eventually, we really want to become a squad that is full of um, time together and experience and good connections and relationships. And 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 that's what we we want to do. We're not in that place now. We're, we're further down the line than what we once were, for sure. But we also still have a percentage of the group that is that is new and is finding out how we work and how we play and and how they can be themselves and and be at their best as well. And that's going to take a bit of time. But at the same time, we've got to pick up points along the way. We've got to win enough games and, and get some, the right amount of positive results to allow all of that to happen. And um, that's a sort of daily our daily challenge. But it's one we're enjoying and um, and we're going to commit to. You spoke after the Burnley game uh, briefly about Callum Hudson-Odoi. Mm. Obviously, you've brought him to the football club. How confident are you that he can reach those heights that he reached maybe a couple of years ago and, and, and come back to the, yeah. the Hudson-Odoi that we know from those days? Um, no, it's like, like, like any of us in life, it's, it's, it's on us, isn't it? It's, so it's on him, you know, and, and we will support him. We will um, help him. Um, we'll push him. We'll be tough with him in the right moments, and we'll and we'll be with him at the right moments as well. And um, all, all of that we hope exists with all of the players. But but in the end, you have to if you want to do something in in life, whether it's a football career or coaching career or or you guys do as well, you have to you have to do it on your own. So um, so he's no different, but he knows that he's he's been great since he's come in. He's trained really well. It's great to, for him to have some good moments the other night. It was also good to see some of the things that we need to work with him as well. So, um, for me, very calm with him, work hard every day, and um, and look forward to trying to get the best out of him. And if we do, we know we'll have a good player on our hands. But you know, we got we got to get to that stage. Best love the weekend. You Thanks too, Naz. Thanks, Thanks mate. Hey, Charlie. Hey, <laughs> I, I know you appreciate staying in the moment, um, but. Can you also appreciate how far you've come as a football club from that mm. defeat at City a year ago? Um, I, when you when you're playing them in a few days, you 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 just you can't uh, you can't look any any anywhere outside of the preparation um, for for the um, for the game. Charlie, we're, st- we're, st- we're still very much in a in a feeling of striving to improve. And, and get better and um, you know like I said that's only where my, where my focus is I'm, I'm sorry it sounded a bit, a bit um, boring if you like but I just think the moment that you are not 100% all in to what's next you know um, you, you know you're not at your best in, in the next game if we've made improvements if we haven't wherever we are I just think it's for, for, for the likes of you guys to discuss and you know, support us to enjoy or, or to think about how we can improve and all that sort of stuff. But for me, the coaching staff and the players, we have to stay just on track and on task about how we how we get the best out of every day and get ready for for the next the next game. So um, all I can say is, since um, that difficult night around about twelve months ago, um, a lot has happened. You know, good, bad, and and indifferent. And what we've tried to do, um, and still are, is is stay pretty level. Don't don't get too too low, and certainly don't get too high. And and as I said, commit to what we're trying to do, and and, and improve, and believe in the plan, and and believe in each other. And um, I think that gives us the best chance of of improving and and get getting better. So um, yeah, it's it's as straightforward as that, really. Sort of like. As you said in the question, we're living in the moment, and in the moment at the moment is trying to prepare for Man City. So there's not not much thinking time for anything else. You've said they're the toughest test in domestic football anywhere in the world, mm. um, and that is some high praise. Uh, but is there also a a fear that they can be built up to be an even bigger beast than they already are? And is that something that you have to? Keep in check with your players in the week. I think there's a, there's a balance between respecting how good they are, you know, um, because you have to, but you also have to continue to believe in yourself because, like I said, if we want to get any success in any game, but we're talking about the next one against Man City, you know, it doesn't happen if you don't believe in yourself and you don't go and make things happen. And this will be 
would be no different. So um, all, all I'm doing is recognising the level of Man City and what they've achieved. Look, look at look at the the trophies that they won last year and and the the status of of of, of Pep, who's an inspiration to to us all, uh, or certainly to me. Um, but I go there believing in my team and, and hopefully the players go there believing in each other and, and take what we can into the game to give ourselves the best opportunity to, to do well and that, that doesn't change. So, um, um, yeah, balance between recognising the opponent but also how, how we can um, perform on the day as well and that's really, like I said, OK, we're talking about Man City now because that's the next game but that's what we're trying to do with every game. I think I've said most weeks one of the things we've definitely increased this year is, is just understanding how, how from within is the most important and um, we continue that. Appreciate your time. As Pep said, you've got two European Cups, they've only got one. <laughs> I know, but um, I heard that actually, Wendy mentioned to me, but I, I spoke to John McGovern earlier, but he's not available for, uh, <laughs> for the weekend and he's not registered on the 25-man the, uh, the squad. I wish they were available, but unfortunately they, uh, they're not. Next season. Cheers, Steve. Thank you. Hi, ah, Steve. Good to see you. Um, Matt. Do you come into this game in a strange way, on a more equal footing with City, having survived last season, established yourself this season, but also having taken a point off them the last time you played them here? Equal in the league? footing? Yeah, Did, you just, more equal footing. Did you just not, say that? Not correct. Yeah. Not exactly equal footing. Nah. A more equal footing, having established yourself as a. They won the treble last year. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're no longer the new boys. Let me let me phrase it that way. Uh, listen, they. they I don't, what's the right term like as I repeat you know it, it, you have to um, respect how, how good they are and how good they can be on a, on a, on a day um, so we just want to go there you know uh, with a plan you, you know you have to have a plan we have a plan for every game and sometimes when we div- deliver them they work and, and it's not always as simple as that when you don't you can, it can go the other way but we, we will go there with a plan and part of that plan is, is trying to really believe in ourselves and that's the intention um, so I've said how good Man City are I don't really want to say it again because how many times do you, do you have to say it and everyone knows but you know like I said we just really want to go there giving the best account of ourselves really believe in ourselves we're on our own journey we're on our own path um, it's not. It's never going to be a straightforward one, um, but while while we're on that journey, we've really got to continue to try and increase the belief in what we do and and and, and how we achieve our objectives. And um, this is just the next step, and how it goes, we'll see. It was a difficult one last year, of course, um, but um, but we'll have to go there, like I said, with ambition and really believe in ourselves that, that we can get something um, in the game. And um, if we don't believe that, then nobody else will. And then good things don't happen. So that's what we want to try and do. You mentioned it was quite the experience, obviously, going there last season and the heavy defeat. Did it change the way you worked? Did it change you as a, as a manager at all going through that? Um, well, it was, like I said, it was a really, really tough night. But, but I know to, to succeed in life um, or in a job or in, a, in a, an objective, you, you, you do have to suffer at moments along the way. And um, um, you never look for moments of suffering and um and uh you know it's ne- never something that you want but you accept that it happens and you also accept that it can be good for you you know uh, in a strange sort sort of way so um so if that was the case from last last year then that's what we w- we would have tried to have done and them sort of things can, can can happen at man city and i really hope it's not on on the weekend and we'll be doing everything we can you know um, but but as I've said, you know, the last thing I want to come across is is negative or defeat this because that's just not in my nature. Hopefully realistic. Um, but you can go there and play at 100% and still not get the result that you want. But we've got to go there trying to play at 100%. And if we do, we give ourselves a chance. And just on the, the, the squad in general, you've got obviously a lot, lot of talent that's come on board this season and, and last season. For a game like Manchester City away... Is it a case of it might not be you picking necessarily players that are in form, but now more than ever for this match, players that can can do a job against City away? Well, well, we'll see. I think, like I've said, the 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 intention of the evolution of the of the of the team is to um, is to evolve how we play, um, the formations, the the style, um, 
and that's with and without the ball. You know, sometimes when people talk about a style of play, I think they just think it's with the ball. It's it has to be equal without the ball, as well. But we've given ourselves variety, you know, and um, we'll try and use that that wisely because, like I said, the, this this is um, such a tough competition, the Premier League, where you know you you you're having to adapt while while staying within your ways of working. You're having to adapt a lot, game by game. Um, and the weekend will be will be no different. It's just a final one on, on general expectations. Obviously, when you went there, more or less towards the start of, of last season, you were a club that was looking to survive that initial first year, and obviously now you're into the second season in the Premier League. Do you go there with expectations slightly shifted on your players, on yourself? Well, I, like I said, it's not just about preparing for the game on, on the weekend. It's It's in general, we're just trying to improve and trying to get better um, to allow us to to um, improve from from last season, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. That's what we want to do, and that's what we're trying to do. But it, but just because we want to doesn't mean it's going to happen. We have to work hard. And like I said, the the one of the biggest learnings from last season, and we and we learned it quickly. Was it's just an easy thing to say, was it, but how tough this league is, and there's zero room for 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 error. You look at the game the other night. We dominate the, the first phase of the game come off it a little bit and find ourselves sort of one one nil down and then having to show great resilience to 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 get in, into the game and there was marginal game get, uh, marginal moments that sort of ended up with 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 the result so that's just one example that happens every game and sometimes it goes for you and sometimes it 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 doesn't but if you're not concentrated and you're not absolutely in the moment for every second of the game then you know you can um you can get punished and then at the same time if the opponent drops a little bit you want to be able to try and do the same um same to them and like and I thought the game the other night was examples of both so um so yeah we, we like I said we learned quickly last season how ruthless this league is and and to 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 survive and thrive you have to you have to match that and and, and like I said all the opponents you come up against thanks Steve good luck you too mate One more. Yeah. Oh, sorry, John. Sorry. You're doing at the back, John. Yeah. All right. Um, this is a latest run of a ridiculous run of away games at the start of the season. Um, but is it? Is there any discernible advantage to getting you know Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea, City mm. out of the way by the end of September? Well, I think once we've this Palace is the, is the way game after that, and that's that's going to be yeah, tough, and, and so on, and, and and so forth. So, so you, the, the, yeah, of course, you know, like this, this, some of the games we've played, and the one coming up on Saturday are, are perceived as as tough as it gets. There's, there's no doubt about that, but there won't be any easy game this this year. Um, if they if they games that are out of the way, and we manage to get some decent performance and results out of them, then that's good. Um, you, 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 I guess you. It's good when they're done, but we'll still every away game, every home game will be tough. So the other night, you know, we've still got to go to many other tough places. So, yeah, we're just taking it as it comes, Dave. It's um, um, it is fixture lists are, are what they are, and you get the fixtures, then you get the change of kickoff times and days, and I think some have been changed. We got a load of Sunday games on on a run, and you just have to just have to adapt to it, and where you go and when you go is is. Is the beauty of the Premier League really, and um, you know you see some of the guys that are playing in Europe and some of the schedules they have to play their games today, for example, and Champions League last couple of days and League Cup. Okay, you know that's not something we can talk about League Cup because because you know we didn't do very well in it this year. But I just think it's how it is now, and that's why you have to have um, the squad numbers and and strength and depth, just trying to cope with it all and. Um, Sometimes the clubs that can adapt the best are the ones who, who succeed in a particular season, and um, you know ho hopefully we can make some good decisions in doing that as well. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Cameras off. Cameras off. Section. Michael. Yep. How are you, mate?